My name is Eric Hammonds. I'm the senior tech at LC Fish Hatchery. We produce 175,000 rainbow trout for area lakes anywhere between uh, Florence and Portland. Majority of our fish do go to the Florence area because of our proximity. Um, we also raise 50,000 wild winter steelhead. Uh, those are from the Wild Broodstock Program Parenting. Uh, those go to the Silettes. We also have a 40,000 traditional hatchery broodstock program for the Alsi Basin and a 100,000 wild winter broodstock program for the Alsi Basin as well. The beginning of December is when we open up our traps for adult collection and uh, we'll typically go through the traps once a week depending on how many fish return. So uh, sometimes we might have to get in multiple times a week depending on if we get a lot coming in at any given time. Um, as we collect the fish, we will sort them based off what they are. So whether it's a male, female, male or female, whether which stock it belongs to. So prodigy of the traditional hatchery stock program have not only the adipose fin clip, which most anglers recognize, but the left max is clipped, which is a jawbone on the fish. Uh, the wild broodstock program will have a right max clip in addition to the adipose fin clip. So we'll also sort based off that because we don't integrate those two programs. Um, we will then hold those fish until ready to spawn and then we'll, we'll pick days when we have X number of fish ready to spawn and we'll go through and we'll spawn the fish. Well, look at my stuff. Yeah. I mean, if you were to count them, they just feel... Yeah. Uh, Males will go out for carcass seeding into area streams that no longer have as strong as salmon or steelhead returns as nutrient enrichment for the native populations that are still there. Um, the females will get dumped back into the river as a potential uh, fishery. Uh, some of those fish may get caught by anglers and retained this year. Some of them will successfully outmigrate to the ocean to possibly come back again as a fresh fish next year. Um, and some will die. Um, they don't all survive. It's, it's natural for some steelhead not to make it into repeat spawn. A lot of time in the past, traditional hatchery stock programs would collect the number of fish they needed to spawn, spawn them, and then sometimes even close their traps down to leave the fish in the river and that kind of thing, and, and just handle as few fish as possible. Hatcheries have evolved and we don't do that anymore. So even with our traditional program, we will spawn a larger number of fish, keeping fewer number of eggs. It's a lot more labor intensive process, but we do believe it's a better outcome because you have a broader genetic pool you're pooling from. Um, same thing with the wild broodstock program. You know, if we use any of the F1s in that program, we're implying that same rule, broader genetics, fewer of those hatchery turning fish. We'll use, try to utilize more of the wild fish in those programs or exclusively in those programs, depending on availability. And, uh, but that does increase our workload a lot because you have to handle them differently. You're holding them differently. You're, you're spawning them differently. Um, and so all that adds to the workload. Instead of all your spawns being on a single day or you know, one week, it's now spread out sometimes over four or five months. Like our Celeste Wild Rootstock program will start spawning sometimes even at the end of December in the past. Now it's mostly January on, but we won't finish up spawning until May. And so for a hatchery with large rearing units and stuff like that, it's really hard to tie all those spawns together to create a uniform product that goes out April 1 when they need to. In cooperation with our district staff and anglers, anglers that are involved in the program that have signed up and have transport permits and stuff and live wells in their boat, they will be out fishing for fish, they'll catch a wild fish, they'll put it in their live well. And then they have specific drop locations on the slets where we have boxes in the river with locks on them and everything. They will securely drop that fish into that box. Then later on, our district staff, once they feel they either have some in the box or they get called and told there's some in the box, they will go and sort through those fish in those boxes. If they have extra that we don't need to meet goals, they'll release the, anything that they want to hold on to, they will load into the fish truck and bring to us. Once the fish comes into us, we will check that fish in. So we will anesthetize it in MS-222. We will inject the fish with a broad spectrum antibiotic. We'll inject it with a B vitamin, which is thiamine. And then we will also individually tag that fish so we can track that fish growth. So track that fish, meaning how long it's here, 
when it successfully spawns, when it goes back to the slats, hmm. that sort of thing. Because we live spawn all those wild fish. So then it'll get put in our holding tanks. We will hold it until it's ready to spawn. Depending on the time of year, depends on how often we check those fish. Hmm. So if it's early in the season, we'll try to put fish into separate tanks to where we don't have to go through them all the time. So if we get a fish in, it's rock hard, it's really green, it's gonna be a month or two before it's ready to spawn, we'll put it in a different tank and try not to mess with that fish very often. Whereas the fish we think is gonna spawn next week, we'll move it up front, closer to where we're ready to go, and we might check that specific tank weekly. Just reducing the handling time, reducing stress on those fish. You see, it looks good enough that she'd hold another week. Yeah, I think she's about the same as the other one. Let's hold them. Wait a week. That makes me feel better. Though.